So this is running NATS on Kubernetes, uh, past, present, and future. Um, yeah, someone Wally uh, or Valdemar Quevedo. I've been using NATS for a while, and I help out with the ecosystem for uh, Kubernetes. I also maintain the Ruby and Python clients. And um, uh, here, one second. Okay, this is fun. So I uh, just want to give an uh, update on the current state of NATS uh, on Kubernetes. Uh, there are many options available for deploying NATS. Um, so you, uh, deploying NATS in Kubernetes is actually fairly straightforward. You can just use uh, stateful sets and services, but we also maintain a NATS operator, which is the customer service definitions. And uh, following the voice from the users, we also man started maintaining a Helm chart. And you can find all of these artifacts on the NATS.io KA's uh, uh, repositories. Repository. So the basics about running NATS on Kubernetes. So as I mentioned, um, what we have found that works the best is to use uh, stateful sets and mapping them against a service. And in order to create a single A record for each one of the um, members uh, that are part of that cluster. This is very important because it allows you to, uh, the, the, the gossiping of the network endpoints to work properly when enabling TLS. Uh, very uh, straightforward, three nodes uh, cluster. Uh, it's just like CubeCTL apply and uh, basically dolly text, but as you know, it is, it is limited customization you get from uh, this approach, but it's uh, fairly easy to get started this way. Uh, so the basics that I want to cover first is that um, it doesn't, it is not recommended to really use uh, ingresses or load balancers in front of nets. Of course, that will change now with the uh, introdu uh, introduction of web sockets. Uh, so because there is an, um, the way that the original protocol works, uh, and as Derek mentioned uh, previously, um, it, it was not uh, very reliable sometimes when using it from a load balancer. So, but that recommendation will change with the uh, web sockets. And also, uh, you could use node ports uh, as well, but that means that the, there will be gossiping of advertisements uh, of uh, URLs that maybe are, are not meant to be public. So it's, you have to, uh, it's suggested to uh, disable the advertisements. So one of the things that we released last year was a one line installer that um, in, gives you a full blown cluster with a TLS, uh, the whole like, decentralized authority set up and all those pieces with a single um, a script. So this is a, a one fast way to get um, kind of like production ready cluster of nets um, with, with all the uh, credentials and NATS v2 features. Uh, of course, there are some, um, uh, there are, that you can also get the surveyor as uh, that uh, Colin uh, shared before this talk. And there are some um, cons from this uh, approach because uh, there's not a lot of customization. You cannot modify the namespace, for example, of some of the domains. So it is uh, good to get it started, but for managing a release of nets, uh, you may, we may need something else. So that's why we also have the nets operators. The nets operators give you the, the custom resource definition where you can manage um, with less verbose YAML as using the stateful sets to manage the, uh, a cluster. Uh, so these were, especially for NATS v1, these were um, uh, well, pretty straightforward because you didn't 
got configured a lot. But there's some in, 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 in um, complexity with the, using the operators. Uh, you always need to define the proper uh, policy to able to run the operator. Mm -hmm. You need to make a choose. Uh, you need to choose whether using a cluster scope or namespace scope deployment. And uh, so, because we inherited some of the uh, original patterns from the etcd operator, it is not using a stateful set and instead using the, uh, its own controller uh, creating the pods. Uh, of course, there are some issues with the versioning of the, the resource types. And uh, these days you have the operator framework which uh, help with some of these issues and also it's a little bit less uh, flexible to uh, configure because it is managing the, the configuration map for you. So um, thanks to the uh, suggestion from many users, uh, we also now officially support uh, Helm, Helm charts, uh, Helm V3 charts. Uh, I like, uh, really like Helm V3. I think it simplifies the, um, the, well, the, the install and managing the Helm charts uh, via Helm V2. And also I really like the decentralized approach to the Helm repositories. So now we have one listed in Helm Hub. And you can just uh, Helm repo uh, add the, the NAT Helm charts and install them from our GitHub pages. And this is the one for NATs and also for NAT streaming. So I'll give a quick uh, demo of um, creating a super cluster using the Helm charts. And I have previously uh, uh, generated the, uh, using NSC, the decentralized uh, configuration that is going to get imported as a configuration map for the cluster. On the left, you can see the, you can see the, the helm required to be able to create the super cluster. In this case, I have three different clusters, one in uh, Amsterdam, New York, and San Francisco. And the gateways um, are defined uh, explicitly, not using a DNS in this case, but you could use uh, external DNS to be able to create the DNS entries uh, if, you, um, uh, if you follow the tutorials on the external DNS repo. So I'm gonna create a super cluster. Let's see that right now there's nothing. Okay, uh, in this case, I'm um, just a simple script to create the cluster first in San Francisco, New York, then in Amsterdam. I'm using that parameter to dynamically set the gateway uh, name, which will become, will be used to represent the cluster and then that's Helm chart. So, and deploy. It's there. So we should have our pods starting. Now we'll connect to a couple of the clusters. So I'll connect to San Francisco and Amsterdam. To double check that we're on completely different clusters. You can see from the connect URLs that have been advertised. That here in San Francisco should be different. In a connection, uh, subscription. Okay, so that got routed from a, another cluster using the gateway connections. Just a simple demo of um, 
using the health charts. Um, there are toggles for enabling uh, clusters. Uh, by default, it's going to give you uh, three nodes if you enable it. You can also uh, use the enable lib nodes and there is um, type memory type resolver support and account. There's also a account server helm chart. And uh, yeah, definitely looking for some uh, feedback on the uh, helm charts. Okay, so are the future for uh, NATS and the Kubernetes ecosystem? So we'll con continue to maintain the operators, but definitely looking uh, for some more feedback and recommend using the Helm charts for uh, new deployments. And also always looking for more contributors for the Helm charts. Actually, the NATS streaming Helm charts was in collaboration with uh, another uh, a NATS user from the community. And there are also Helm charts for the uh, NATS operators com to contributed by the community. So, and so just question mark about uh, the future. Uh, sometimes feel that maybe there's uh, uh, too much YAML in Kubernetes. Um, uh, kind of a, a, a plug that a project that I really like that could be promising in uh, helping how to manage these, uh, all of these artifacts. And one of them is doll, the doll language. So I've been looking into it and, uh, and I think it's still early in their ecosystem. Uh, but there's a project named Dal Kubernetes that can give you um, kind of like a type language to be able to create uh, pretty much the same that the operator is doing. So in this case, on the left, you can see that the operator is creating via the custom resource definition, a uh, configuration map, then a stateful set and a service. But you can also do the same in a less verbose way. Um, well, and so not using YAML, a strongly typed way with uh, Dal and also results in the same objects without having to write a controller. Uh, so that's it for my talk. Uh, thank you. And let me know if you have any questions or I, we can follow up in the K8s and NATS operator channels in Slack. Thanks, Wally. Uh, really appreciate that. And you know, being part of the CNCF, we wanna make sure the integration with other CNCF projects, uh, including Kubernetes is uh, the best that it can absolutely be. Um, but it's interesting as we've been doing some very, very large POCs when Kubernetes is the deployment platform. Um, uh, in our report that we always give the potential customer, we report on how many lines of YAML we wrote, um, which is usually an order of magnitude more than any other uh, app code or uh, NATS configuration stuff. So I still think there's room for improvement across the whole ecosystem. Um, but, you know, watching what Wally just did, Hopefully that, that resonates with folks with the, the Helm uh, demo where he was deploying that inside of multiple Kubernetes clusters across multiple geos and regions. And this can be multiple cloud providers or even on-premise to, to cloud provider. And they were all instantaneously connected, right? And so you had that ability transparently to communicate across all these different deployment platforms. And uh, for a lot of folks that we've been dealing with, that really kind of is a light bulb moment for them when they see that. Um, and a bunch of the speakers earlier on talked about that too. Um, you know, Dale was talking about with service mesh being deployment agnostic. So we think that's great, but again, we're gonna double down and make sure that, you know, NATS inside of Kubernetes is, is the best we can make it. So thanks, Wally.